All right, everybody, welcome back to Jeff's Kitchen. Uh, we got we got a couple of recipes for you today. I'm going to show you a couple of cool way to use uh, Swiss chard in particular. Um, recipes, we're going to do a uh, kind of like a galumpkin, but instead of cabbage, we'll use Swiss chard and, and wrap a rice pilaf in it. Um, and then a uh, farro Swiss chard soup. Um, we've talked about farro before. And I've mentioned to you that that is my absolute favorite grain. You can either buy it on uh, on Amazon for it's like a whole case though, or you can get them individually at Meyer. I know carries it. Whole Foods carries it. Uh, so that's Faro. So without further ado, I'm going to get right into this today. We've got uh, quite an abundance going in the garden, and the result is. We have plenty of vegetables. So what I'm going to do first, show you what I got going on here. Um, I've got, so I'm doing, going to do a farro and Swiss chard soup uh, over here. And we're going to sweat down the onions and garlic and uh, the farro for a couple minutes will, will sort of roast in there. Um, I have some vegetable broth going here, just very basic vegetable broth. Uh, and that is for my rice pilaf. So I'm going to use this Royal Blend mix that's real pretty. And uh, a lot of times what I'll do is stuff, a, stuff it in the squash and use um, onion and garlic and walnuts and uh, maybe some celery and some Michigan cherries and uh, I'll do it, you know, I'll do a nice little medley that way. Um, I'm going to leave the sweet out today. And we're going to get started with the rice. So I'm actually doing quite a bit of rice just because when I cook greens, I make sure there's leftovers. So I'm getting my whole greens at least a few times a week at bare minimum. If not, every single day. I'm give that a little stir. See if I can read that. Tell me how long that cooks. Right about 15 minutes on this royal blend. So not too bad. Let me set a timer. So I'm going to set that a couple minutes under because at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in uh, some some walnuts, some celery, and this is actually stem from the Swiss chard, which you can use just like celery, but I want it just a little bit crunchy. It is going to be a pilaf, so I'm going to add some peas to it, and I just have some frozen peas that are that are attempting to thaw here. And then for right now, what I'm going to do on our pilaf is I'm going to give it some onion. And if I can find my garlic press, I'm going to press some garlic right in there. It's hiding. So these I, were actually really large, so I cut them in half. And I love the onion and garlic in everything. They say that it's protective for cancer, and it just adds a whole lot of flavor. Well, there's my onion and garlic and the pilaf. Let's come to a boil. Turn that down a little bit. Put the lid mostly on there. Make sure it's not boiling too much. And then, let's see if I can get you guys a little closer here. All right, so we are going to sweat down some onions and garlic over here. Now, this is just a quick little trick that a lot of people don't know about, especially if you're 
new to plant-based cooking, most people just slather their food in so much oil, and I'm telling you that it's not necessary and there's very, very little benefit to oil. It offers some healthy omega-3s, uh, but too much of it is heavy in omega-6. You need, you need some fat in your diet, but there are plenty of good sources of fat. A lot of people don't know that one tablespoon of olive oil is the equivalent of 44 olives. So just eat the olives. You're never going to eat 44 of them. And that all happens to be the most calorie-dense food next to butter. And it's even more calorie dense than lard. So we're going to crank that up. So, one tablespoon of olive oil at 120 calories is not very satiating. So, I encourage people if you're trying to lose weight to uh, don't do the oil. So, you can see here, it's just going to take a minute. Just let this sweat down a little bit. Make sure you don't get steamed up on the lens, I guess. Sweat that a little bit. I'm going to just give this pharaoh a couple of minutes of, of sort of browning and moistening. And then this is such an easy recipe that pharaoh will puff, puff up. That's a whole cup of pharaoh. It'll give me, um, it'll give me two cups total because it doubles in size roughly. Uh, we're going to add petite, petite diced tomatoes with green chilies. Now, uh, if you are trying to be careful of your salt intake, be mindful. These have a lot of salt in them, but that's going to be all of my salt and seasoning for the dish. Because uh, between the peppers in here, the tomato sauce, the garlic, the onions, and then Swiss chard does have a very distinct flavor. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot you need to do to that for seasoning. So I'm going to turn that down just a hair. You know that tomatoes have a really high boiling point. <clears throat> get hot very fast. And we're just going to let that do its thing for a minute. And then I'm going to add uh, some water to it, about five, roughly five cups, four to, four to six, somewhere in there. And we're going to add a whole bunch of Swiss chard to it. So we've got this soup started. Right here I've got just a little um, marinara sauce. It's just, uh, you know, kind of your basic spaghetti sauce. It's got some mushrooms and onions and peppers and whatnot in it. And that's going to go on top of our uh, wrapped rice pilaf that will be in the, in the Swiss chard. And then we'll bake that off with, uh, with the marinara sauce over the top. So that is it for this for a minute. So I'm going to put you on pause. And I'll get... Uh, I'll continue working on this. So real quick on the soup, once that's the, that farrow's cooked for just a couple minutes, I'm going to throw the water and the Swiss chard in there, and that one's going to be good to go. It's going to be ready to, ready to rock for the, for the recipe. It'll be a nice soup. I'll freeze it in portions. Now you notice today that I've got a couple of different, different dishes going, and when I cook, I like to cook lots. I like to make leftovers. I like to make stuff that we can freeze. If you're going to make a mess in the kitchen, you might as well cook plenty of food and have leftovers so you don't have to cook every day, and it makes healthy choices easier. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, guys, I wanted to just show you what we've got going here. So this, uh, this rice is coming along nicely. It doesn't take very long. That's my 12-minute timer there. I wanted to go a little bit less because what I'm going to do is take these peas, and 
I've got celery right here. It's going to give it a little bit of crunch. I don't want to cook that too much because I don't want it to be a pile of mush after it's been in the oven. So what I'm literally going to do here is just stir this all in. And like I said, this is nice to stuff in a squash, and especially if you give it a little cherries, maybe a little thyme in there or something like that. It um, doesn't need a lot. It's got, just has a lot of flavor. And I did it in vegetable broth, which has a little bit of salt in it. Uh, so that's all there is to the rice pilaf. Um, my, you can see that I put my, um, my water and tomatoes, onion, farro, and Swiss chard in here. And I'm going to add carrots in this now. And that's going to be a few minutes to cook, but as soon as I've got the rest ready, I'll come back in just a minute. One other quick thing that I forgot, I did mention to you, but the, uh, the uh, Swiss chard, the stems on it are just like celery, just has a very earthy flavor. You've got to wash them good, make sure they're not dirty. Um, that's going to go into my farro soup. The carrots are in there as well. I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, so our soup is beautiful. You can see the farrows cook nicely. I put the carrots and the and uh, everything in there, so that's ready to go. Uh, I'm going to turn that off because it's done, and I'm going to just freeze that for later. And what we're doing here, I have the um, Swiss chard from the garden that's just abundant this year. Um, great way to get some greens in. Got some peas in here for some so-called protein. Make it a little heartier. Um, and then you just, you know, wrap it up just like you would a uh, cabbage. If you wanted to get real specific about how you how you wrap it, you could. You would fold over the sides and make it. But of course, I'm going to have stuff fall apart here. If you wanted to toothpick it, you could do that too. Um, but all we're going to do with this is, the primary goal is just a conduit for keeping the, it's hot here too, so got to watch it. Conduit for keeping this together, just for a serving size, and something to put the sauce over. And that, like I mentioned before, is just a marinara sauce. I can I can do uh, vegan sushi rolls better than better than these, but you can just roll them up however tight you think is necessary for you. You're going to place them in the pan. <clears throat> and then after that I've got this put together, uh, it's just going to be, I mentioned I put the celery in the um, Swiss chard stems in there at the last minute because I want it crunchy and not mushy, not completely mushy. Um, <clears throat> we're going to put the marinara sauce over the top and it'll go in the oven at 375 for just about 20 minutes just to, to steam, the, steam the Swiss chard leaves and, and make sure the rest of everything gets finished. You can see that it's a going to be a pretty dish. And the recipe for the for the pilaf is actually going to be uh, the one that I mentioned for the um, the um, zucchini boats or squash you know basically it's a squash boat that I usually do a pilaf and in a stuffed squash so that's the recipe you're going to see in the comments on the video coming together nicely here which room do I have in there at least one more
Sometimes you got to break the spine if they're if they're real stiff. One more. <clears throat> Just so they roll a little bit better. I did sort of cut them at an angle when I when I was getting the leaves ready, uh, and. So a lot of the, the woody part is not there. And then here's our sauce. See, it's just a, sort of a chunky um, marinara sauce. And we're just going to top this with the sauce. Spread that around a little bit. Looks like some broccoli in that sauce. Put anything in marinara, by the way. It doesn't need to be just sausage and tomato and onion. And then that's going to go in the oven and uh, cook about 20 minutes. So there you have it. There's a uh, rice pilaf stuffed uh, Swiss chard with a marinara sauce and a farro uh, Swiss chard soup. So enjoy the greens this season as much as you can. We've talked about trying to get as many greens in your diet as possible. Um, by the way, if you uh, have anemia at all, if you have your greens with your tomato or greens with orange, there's like some great blood orange salads uh, that are good, but greens and, and vitamin C together will help you absorb iron a little better. So just a little tip. So there's your, there's your Swiss chard greens for the day. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little something. Cooking is easy. Just do lots of it and uh, you'll have lots of choices to, to keep you healthy. So that's it for now. See, uh, we have two videos in August. See you soon.